Hello guys, welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Berg and today I am joined by the lovely Charlotte. You may know her from IO and also Life's Biggest Questions, but if you don't, say hello Charlotte. Hello, my name is Charlotte. I'm on the channel Inform Overload. We cover trending news and we occasionally give our opinions. So if you like that sort of thing, definitely come check us out. And you're about to hit a big subscriber milestone. I yes, we are. We're about to hit a million subs and we would really appreciate it if you would be the one to help us get there. They could be the one million subscriber. That you could be the one million subscriber. So today we're going to be talking about loopholes guys. That's when you see the rules but you also see there's kind of a way to get around them. The people on this list take that to the extreme. Are they dumb? Are they a genius? Let's find out with the top 10 insane loopholes people actually use. Starting things off at number 10 we have flying for pudding. In 1999 a man called David Phillips was eating a healthy choice frozen dinner when he noticed a promotion on the back of the packaging. Send in 10 barcodes and get 1000 frequent flyers points. He realized that he could send in the barcodes for their very cheap healthy choice pudding. So he bought 12,159 cups of pudding. The company tried to resist him but ended up handing over 1.25 million flyers points to Philips. Ever since then he's been flying his family around the world for free for many years. They even made a movie about it called Punch Drunk Love. Alright next up at number 9 now we have the tank. Nick Mead is a man from the UK who drives his sons to school in a tank. This sounds crazy but it's actually true. He can drive all the way into the school and park and drop off his kids and it is technically legal. He got his tank registered and licensed and it even has a tax disc on display. The only condition is that the guns are disabled. Now he says that the only damage he's caused was when he took the fuel cap off a local bus. It's not too bad. Coming in at number 8 we have the ATM. In 2011 an Australian man called Daniel Saunders realized there was something wrong with National Australia Bank's ATMs. They would still dispense bills during late night maintenance even though they couldn't trace how much they dispensed and to whom. Saunders hit the jackpot and spent the next few months draining every ATM he could find at night, eventually racking up 1.6 million dollars. He spent it on parties, prostitutes and private jets, but wasn't careful enough and was eventually caught by police. He's now in jail. Alright coming at number 7 now we have free room for life. There are some hotels in some US states that have to abide by a certain law. If a person lives in a room for a day and then requests a 6 month lease, they have to honour that. Fine. The problem is a man called Ultimji Uatara did this to a room in New York that was officially listed for zero dollars a month. So he leased it forever. The owner messed up and tried to take him to court over it but lost. Meaning as far as I know he has a room for free for life. Nice loophole. Moving on to number 6 we have the smoking ban. In 2011 Minnesota followed a lot of other US states by banning smoking in public buildings including bars. However, if you were an actor playing a character who smoked, you were allowed. Well the owners of Barnacles Bar decided to let all their customers smoke inside by claiming that they were actors. They said that every night was simply an improvised play. It wasn't long before the law was reworded to make sure this couldn't happen again. But I guess it was pretty funny while it lasted. And next up at number 5 we have the Church of Weed. The state of Indiana has very strict laws protecting religious freedom. This allows religions to be free from a lot of government interference. Well some cannabis lovers from Indiana decided to start up the Church of Cannabis and argue that their marijuana is an essential part of their religious practice. It sounds crazy but it's technically legal. The religion even has 12 commandments and one of them is to spend at least 10 minutes a day just contemplating life in a quiet space. That sounds like my kind of religion. Am I right? All right, at number four now we have cutting money. In a small corner of Quebec in Canada, locals have started cutting their money in half, literally. Half a $20 bill is now worth 10, half a 10 is worth 5, and so on and so forth. Why are they doing this? To save their own economy. You see, they wanted to encourage people to spend locally and help local businesses. They tried a homemade currency, but it was too easy to just photocopy. So they started ripping normal money in half. That way, the money can only ever circulate within their community and not be spent anywhere else. The Bank of Canada might not approve of this but they say it is totally legal. What do you guys think of this? Cutting money in half, dumb or genius? Next up at number 3 now we have the murder. In 2009 an American man called Ezekiel Gilbert hired a female escort on Craigslist. The woman went to his house and Gilbert paid her $150 for half an hour of her time. He expected sex but she said that wasn't part of the deal. He got angry and she ran out to her driver. Gilbert confronted him 
and as the car started to drive away, he fired a gun at them four times. One of the bullets hit the woman in the spine, eventually killing her. Incredibly, he did not go to prison for this. This is because of the law in Texas which says you can use deadly force to prevent robbery at night on your own property. His lawyers argued that her refusal to have sex while taking his money was robbery at night. I think this is ridiculous, but what do you guys think? Next up at number 2 we have fake internet. In Cuba there are major restrictions when accessing the internet that you are using right now. The internet that most of the world uses. So some people got around this by making their own internet. They strung together some Wi-Fi routers, a few modems and ethernet cables to make their very own. It works just like the real internet. People share articles, visit chat rooms and even play games like World of Warcraft with each other, all on this miniature internet. People do get banned for trying to connect it to the the real internet though. And finally at number 1 now we have the naked man. In North Carolina there is a naked man and people are angry. For many years people in Charlotte have been complaining that this man has been exposing himself to them. The pictures you're seeing now certainly seem to show that. Many people called the police but the police said it's perfectly legal. Nudity laws only apply to public nudity and this man was on private property. Therefore the law defends his right to expose himself. He quite often takes strolls in front of his front door while on the phone but until he takes a step off of his own property, there is nothing the police can do. What do you guys think? Do you think the law should change or do you think he totally has the right to expose himself in his own home? Well guys, thank you for watching this video and thanks very much of course to Charlotte for helping me out today. Thank you for having me Danny, this was really fun. Don't forget to come and check out IO and life's biggest questions. Bye guys. Bye.